Good evening and thank you for joining us online as we start a brand new series called Jesus Is. I am looking forward to looking at the different attributes of Jesus and I sure hope you will enjoy this series as much as I already have. Uh, but before we get into tonight's lesson, let's go ahead and take out our prayer sheet and go over that together. Uh, first, we just want to thank the Lord for a great Easter Sunday. Thank you so much for praying for our Easter services. Uh, as a result of your prayers, we were able to see four people come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior uh, through the service and then some follow-up that happened uh, a couple days right after Easter. So we are just ecstatic about what the Lord is doing and that uh, the Lord is moving in our midst. And so we're just super excited about that. Also, not on the prayer sheet, but I personally just want to thank the Lord uh, for great uh, missions giving that's happening. Uh, I'm just so excited. We're able, to, we're going to be uh, talking with our missions team and uh, about raising some support and, and giving more missionaries some more monthly support. So be praying for that process if you would, but we'll be going through that here soon, and we're just excited about that. A um, couple of things, though, want to take to the Lord in prayer is Jody McNeil uh, actually was injured at an incident in work, and uh, it's hurt her jaw, and so just be praying for her. Uh, she did go back to work uh, last night, I think it was, uh, I think Kristen told me. So um, be praying for her, though, as she deals with this pain. And then Joyce Maruku is fighting blindness. Um, they had some tests and some surgeries and uh, here recently. And so be praying for her as she's dealing with this. She's got a little one. Patrick, her husband, uh, helps us with the greeter ministry. Uh He's been kind of helping out there um, and just be praying for that dynamic and that family situation and uh, for Joyce, if you would. Um, and then Ann Drummond has been moved to rehab at Mary Greeley, so be praying for her rehab there. And then Barb Weston is having leg pain, so be praying for her. And then Sebastian, who is likely on with us tonight, uh, say hi to him and let him know that you're praying for him, if you would. Uh, he's not feeling well. Tracy said this morning during the online prayer time that um, he had a fever, so be praying for him that he'll be able to recover quickly from that. Continue to pray for Elaine Jackson and Karen Dobb, uh, Lindsay Garcia and Ding Sherman all having different uh, elements, and then Emily Burris also. don't want to forget little Emily. Uh, be praying for her and her uh, eczema. So be praying for that. And then Jennifer Hill has asked that we pray for her mother, Mary, uh, has cancer and, and just a lot of pain. So pray for her recovery, if you would. And then the Swansons, great couple in our church. Their oldest son has COVID, and they're asking uh, prayer for him and well as his wife, not to um, get that as well. And so be praying for the Swanson's oldest son. Then be praying, continue praying for Wayne Salter's great grandson, Axel. We've been lifting him up. Keep lifting him up in prayer, if you would. He does have surgery on the 21st of this month. So be praying for him um, and that that will um, get resolved, hopefully, because of that surgery. So let's pray for him on that. And then there's a few unspoken prayer requests. We're going to continue. Pastor Abel uh, has asked prayer for an unspoken. And then also our missionary of the week is Patrick and Ann Janelle McClure. There are missionaries to Brazil. Um, they've been back in Brazil and, and working on... Um, translation of the Bible. He said that uh, one of the Bible studies is actually translated into English and going into hard-to-reach countries uh, that they're going to send over there. So he's been working on some translation things as well as busy in his local church with counseling and uh, just ministering to the folks there in his church. Um, and then they're asking prayer for Nathaniel as he goes to college. Looks like he might be going to College of the Ozarks. 
Um, so that is in um, just south of Springfield, Missouri, where uh, myself and a lot of the staff went to um, college, and so I'll be praying for him. And then he's asking prayer for their family as they uh, loss, had a loss of their great-grandparents. Uh, there was two of them that, that they lost uh, here recently. So be praying for them um, in those aspects, if you would. Let's go ahead and take these things to the Lord, and then we'll jump into tonight's lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so very much. I thank you for the opportunity, uh, Lord, to be able to bring these to you. God, that we serve a risen Savior. God, it is such a great reminder on Easter to be able to celebrate that together as a church family. And I just thank you, Lord, for so many guests that we had Sunday. And Lord, and then more importantly than, than guests and our celebration, Lord, we get to celebrate that there were four souls that came to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. And I am just so thankful for that. And I rejoice with the angels in heaven uh, over the souls, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll continue to give us opportunities to be able to see and, and share the gospel with people. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the salvations of, of people in our church that uh, we've listed here on our prayer list, Lord, the, Michael Norton's mother and Arlen Peter, he's praying for his lost friends and, and family and Melody Walker's brother and the, nie the Nord's uh, niece, God, and Lord Kelly Thomas and Chelsea Gerke and uh, Nathan and Melody's son and grandson, Lord Luke Bisher's co-worker and Emily Norton's brother Peter and his wife Vanessa and Joanne Radcliffe's sister Marlene and brother Leon. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that these folks will be able to reach out into their family and uh, be able to th and have the privilege, God, to lead them to you. And Lord, we pray for that. We pray that they will come to know you, Lord, if it's not through their family, Lord, that it's through other people in the community, Lord, and their communities, Lord, being bold and sharing the gospel. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Jody McNeil, who injured, uh, was injured at work, and I just pray that you'll just be with her. Lord, I pray that you'll be with um, Joyce Maruku, who is fighting blindness. Lord, I just pray that you'll give her healing. Lord, we know you are the great physician, Lord, and I just pray that you will heal her body, God. Lord, I pray for Ann Drummond. Lord, I thank you that she's been moved to rehab. I pray that that will go well and that she'll be able to recover quickly. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Barb Weston, uh, who's having leg pain. Lord, I pray that you'll be with uh, her and give her some pain relief. Lord, I pray that you'll also be with Sebastian. Lord, is not feeling well, and I pray that you will just heal him. Lord, I know he's kind of had to deal with some things here in the last couple months, and I thank you for some of the answers that they've been able to get. Lord, but I pray that you will just continue to heal his, his body and strengthen him. Lord, I pray that you will be with Elaine Jackson and Karen and Lindsay and Emily and Ding. Lord, all having things as well, Lord, that we've lifted up to you in the past, Lord, but we lift them up to you again tonight. God, I pray that you'll be with Jennifer Hill's mother, Mary. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll give her uh, some pain relief and allow her to recover, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'll be with the Swanson's oldest son as COVID. I pray that his wife doesn't catch it, but... Lord, we pray that ultimately you're glorified, Lord, through all of these situations. Lord, I pray that you'll be with um, little Axel, Lord, and I pray that you will be with his upcoming surgery, Lord. I pray that you'll be with his parents as I'm sure they're nervous. And Lord, I just pray that you'll just allow him a good surgery. And Lord, allow the surgery to just correct whatever issue, Lord, that he is going through, God. And Lord, I just pray that you'll be with unspoken requests, Lord, that I'm sure all of us have, Lord, that uh, we just haven't uh, shared with anyone, Lord, but are, are weighing on our hearts. Lord, I lift up Pastor Abel's and Jim's and Carol, Lord. I just pray that you'll just be with theirs as we know they are praying about something, Lord. And I pray that you be with others that, that haven't um, spoken about their unspoken God. And Lord, I just pray that you'll work in every situation, that you'll get the honor and the glory. God, I pray that you'll be with our missionaries, Lord, uh, Patrick and Ann. Lord, I pray that you will just continue to bless their ministry. Lord, um, what a great couple they are. And Lord, I just pray that you will be with their family. Lord, I know they've had some loss uh, 
of grand, great grandparents, Lord, I pray that you'll just um, uh, strengthen uh, them in their um, Lord, uh, grief. And Lord, I just pray that you'll be with Nathaniel as he's heading off to college, Lord. And Lord, um, I just pray that you'll um, just allow that to be a smooth transition for him. Lord, I pray that um, you'll be with him as he continues to uh, work on his translation and Lord, and, and also f- through the counseling, Lord, I just pray that you'll give him wisdom and, and direction, Lord, uh, to deal with those things. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you enjoy tonight's lesson on Jesus is Calling. Here's a short video before we get into tonight's lesson. Take a look. Well, I am excited to bring you a new series called Jesus Is. We're going to be looking at the different attributes of Jesus. This evening, we're going to look at the book of John. And in tonight's passage, we will find John's account of Jesus calling the first disciples. But before that, I wanted to share some interesting information I came across while thinking about Jesus calling us. According to Pew Research, The vast majority of Americans, 96%, a near 294 million cell phone users, which is now up 81% from just 35% who they surveyed in 2011. Recent research from the U.S. government shows that almost 43% of adults live in a cell phone only household without a landline. The average American receives 18 spam calls a month. I hope that you don't receive that many. But 43 million of those people were fooled out of more than $10.5 billion last year. About 50% of adults ages 18 to 24 say text conversations are just as meaningful as a phone call. In 2010, an adult who receives, and they typically receive or send an average of 10 texts per day in a survey conducted in 2018, and now the average is 94 texts a day. In 2010, they found young adults, teens who texted, sent around about 50 texts per day. In 2018, they found that they sent 128 text messages per day. Forbes found out that 95% of text will be read within three minutes of being sent and have an average response time of 90 seconds. Even though Jesus didn't grab his cell phone and text all 12 disciples, he did call them to become world changers. Let's read this passage, John 1, 35 to 51. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And looking at Jesus, he walked and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. 
One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, and he said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now the Gospels are known as synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The reason they are called this is because they are so similar. They write in the same way. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are more of an overview. John's not like them. He's writing in a little bit of a different way. Another way to say it would be that the synoptic Gospels tell us what Jesus said and did, whereas John emphasized the identity of Jesus and shows us who he is. Now, I'm sure that you can see from our passage this evening, John has given us great insight into the personalities of the few disciples that he's calling. At this point, John the Baptist has declared to the people that Jesus has come to where John was preaching and teaching. The next day, John is standing with his disciples and telling them again that the man they are watching for is Jesus. These men had heard the testimony of John the Baptist In verse 29, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist's statement has pointed his disciples to Jesus. Andrew and John realize that Jesus is the one prophesied about, the long-awaited Messiah. These men have become captivated with interest and immediately begin to follow him. We know during their time with him, they ask questions. The second half of verse 38 states, They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with them that day, for it was about the tenth hour. These two stayed with him until 4 p.m. that day. After staying with Jesus, Andrew went and searched for his brother, Simon, the son of Jonah to take him back to Jesus because Andrew was sure that he had had an encounter with Jesus. Now the next day, Jesus takes off to Galilee and found Philip from Bethsaida. Now you say, what's so important about this? Well, this was the town that Peter and Andrew were from. Then Philip goes and finds Nathanael. Look at what he says in verse 45. We have found him! Then Nathanael answers his brother like any good brother would do, right? With complete sarcasm. Look at his response in verse 46. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Now, what do you think Nathanael meant by this? Well, it actually was a derogatory remark because people from Galilee, remember, they looked down on people from Nazareth. So when Jesus started toward him, and began this, he begins this encounter with Jesus. Jesus tells Nathaniel a little, little about Nathaniel. Then you can see just the wheels start to turn in Nathaniel's head. Look at verse 48. How do you know me? And then Jesus responds. Look at Nathaniel's response in verse 49. 
Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. There's three major things that I think we can see in this passage. First, the person of Jesus. Did you notice the way that these men talked about the person of Jesus? I think they are things that we can see about the person of Jesus just from these men's reactions to encountering Jesus. First, in verse 36, they mention that He was the Lamb of God. This was the final sacrifice for man. Verse 38, they said rabbi, which meant teacher or master. Verse 41, Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the chosen one, the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. Verse 42 shows the power to rename someone. Well, what's the significance of that? It shows that he has the power to change you and me, to give you a new life in Christ and a new identity. Verse 45, he is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Philip narrowed it down from just any man to the man. Verse 47 and 48, it shows that he is omniscient, all-knowing, and that he led Nathanael to declare the two things he did in verse 49. The Son of God, meaning the one who has a unique closeness with the Father, and also, verse 49, King of Israel, he knows that he is going to rule in the future. Son of man, Jesus has declared himself as the representative of man. That's just a summary of who Jesus is from our passage. When you realize that all of the Old Testament and New Testament proclaim who Jesus is, you can see that there are far more glorious truths about Jesus than we can ever know. Secondly, Jesus is calling others to Him through you. Something I found interesting about John the Baptist is that he was investing in teaching these guys, and then when Jesus comes calling, what does he do? He steps out of the way and encourages them to go to Jesus. Now, something that is pretty typical of a leader is that they like followers, right? I mean, how much fun is it to lead if no one is following? But John got the fact that he was always supposed to be leading people to Christ, not to himself. Later, in John 3.30, he says, He must increase, but I must decrease. Right from the beginning, Jesus is using Andrew and Philip to bring others to Christ. Scripture tells us that Jesus purposely went to these towns where they had family. And these disciples did exactly what they should have done. They didn't waste any time going and telling their brothers about Him. This has been the plan from the beginning. Jesus wants us to be the mouthpiece for Him. He wants others to come to a point in their lives that they recognize their need for Him. And we have a vital role to play in that. You and I never know how God may use our witness. See, John proclaimed Jesus to be the Lamb of God. And guess what? That resonated with Andrew and John, who felt the need for a Savior from their sins. Andrew told Peter that they had found the Messiah, which intrigued Peter enough to go see for himself. Philip praised Jesus to Nathanael as the one who Moses and the prophets wrote about. Although Nathanael was a little skeptical at first, Peter's gentle invitation, come and see, drew Nathanael to the Savior. Jesus called Philip with direct and with authority. Follow me. We have no idea how much Philip knew about Jesus before this, but something about Jesus' manner and command drew Philip after him. Just in this short passage, you can see the importance of getting to know Jesus and His attributes. It's not just for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. In working with some of our young adults, some of the, sometimes they ask the question, what do you think about this person I'm currently dating? Or maybe they'll ask before they start to date the person. Well, usually I'll ask them to share with me some of the things they initially noticed about the person. What attracted them to that person? Well, the same is true when we talk to a person about Jesus. 
there are going to be things in someone's life that resonates with them, and it connects with them to Jesus. For example, someone who is in the best shape of their life might not connect with Jesus being the great healer, but he might connect with Jesus because they have made so many mistakes that the connection with Jesus because he is merciful and gracious. See, we, as we connect with different people together based on their interests, their passions, and where they're at in life, Jesus wants to use us to make those connections with people to Him. But that cannot happen if you are not a student of the Bible and if you don't understand the different attributes of Jesus. So that is why Jesus is calling you to know Him better. I know many of you are faithful in reading your Bible. But we can always learn more about Christ. I'm sure that Andrew and Philip knew a lot about Jesus, studying under the instruction of John the Baptist. But they wanted to get to know Him better. That's why they went and spent time with Jesus. Jesus is choosing to reveal Himself to these guys. Do you remember when you learned about who Jesus is for the very first time? And you started getting excited about how these things and, and the relationship that you are building and the connections. And you probably couldn't think of anything better than serving Him and getting to know Him on a more personal level. Not only is Jesus allowing these guys to begin to see some of the attributes that we went over earlier, but He invites them to come and spend time with Him and ask Him questions and get to know Him better. Remember what the first part of James 4.8 says? Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Jesus wants to be a teacher to us. He wants to teach us how to be a disciple and how to make disciples. If we want to become a close following disciple of Jesus, we must hang out with Him, spend time with Him and in His Word, so that we can learn from Him and pattern our lives after Him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You so much. I thank You so much that You've revealed Yourself in so many different ways. God, help us to recognize these truths. Help us to connect other people to You. Lord, through these different knowledge points and attributes that we've learned about You, Help us to be the mouthpiece that you've designed and intended for us to be. Help us, God, to draw nigh to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, guys, I hope that you have a fantastic week. And be sure to go ahead and spend a little time seeing and if you can find some different attributes that maybe you hadn't ever seen before in your studies this week. May God bless. See you next time.